Hello and welcome everyone! Today I have a Seraph jungle game for you. However, I'm going to provide commentary on it. I'm, I plan to go into my thought process. And also I want to provide some general strategy to people who are not so experienced with Seraph, who haven't gotten able to play this week who are going to go against Sarah this weekend. So I want to equip them with a little bit of knowledge so that they don't rage and get upset because this character has really inflamed some members of the community. A lot of people decry that she's overpowered. That remains to be seen. She might be, but because of Sarah's kit and what she provides, you have to respect her in certain ways because if you felt like you weren't safe under towers before, Serath brings that feeling to a whole new level. It, it, it's pretty incredible what she can do diving towers. Uh, she's the best diver in the entire game, hands down. Nobody's better. Nobody comes close. Uh, but... We'll get to that later. Right now, this ends up being a Serath jungle mirror. And I place a ward at the blue buff just to make sure the enemy jungler doesn't go from his red straight to my blue. I want to try to prevent that from happening. And we're probably uh, in for a pretty standard clear, uh, just a full red clear red camp five camp two camp into looking for opportunities now even with that initial ward that i placed on my blue it still doesn't guarantee that it's going to spot the enemy jungler stealing the blue because what can happen right now is the enemy jungler right now has just reached my three camp which is the one by the wall in solo lane and I, as I'm making my way over to two, the ward is going to dissipate soon. Maybe in like the next 15 seconds, the ward's gonna go down. And then the timing of that is really unfortunate. He can act, like by the time he gets there, the ward is down. So that's a bit, a bit unfortunate, but here we're clearing our two camp here. See, the ward is down now and it would be like in a couple seconds around this time when the enemy jungler would be arriving. But we, oh, see, we see the enemy jungler in mid lane. The gadget survives the dive and I go in to just punish the, um, the Gideon. Honestly, the, in this situation, I probably could have killed him if I just continue and get a right click and blink out, it would be very close though. It'd be very close. I just, with the Serath dying, I didn't want to push it, you know? Um, it's a small victory in and of itself that the Gideon has to back there. I gank this uh, duo just to give some pressure to my duo lane. Now, my plan here was to help them secure gold buff because I, I need to get to my blue side as fast as possible and clear. So I help them do damage. Riv gets a little too close for, for my comfort. And then what I do is just back to blue and that's it. I, so when I was, after I ganked the Gideon, I could have I, I could have went straight to blue, but I figured I could out duo a little bit you, you generally duo is the most valuable lane if you if your duo gets stomped there's a very high probability that you're gonna lose the game uh it's just how it is because it's it's two-fifths of the team and not only that one-fifth of that two-fifths is the the biggest source of damage for the enemy team and it's also the biggest source of damage for a lot of objectives so here we catch the seraph lazy backing and not only that the Serath instantly blinks when we were we queued her already so we follow her cue right now this is in this is so big in in, in and especially in a mirror where in any mirror matchup you want to be the biggest mirror you want to 100 percent so we 
immediately want to take advantage and put her further behind and we opt to go for her five camp because it's the most um uh it, it's the camp that has that gives you the most money and and not a, we don't kill the camp we i chose to just leave one minion there because i don't want that camp to be on a timer i don't know it it, it, it really punishes the Serath right this instance like say her blue is up which there's a high probability that it is right av after base if she would go to blue that five camp is still sitting there with just one minion and it's it's really bad for her so now after all that we we stole a five camp essentially we're just gonna finish our blue clear and 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 fin uh, go back for our first tier two component so we don't have to force anything now as you can see mori has priority in lane Gadget is about even with Gideon, and Duo has priority, so and we're not even on, this, on that side of the map, so we can just pump the brakes here. <clears throat> uh, one thing that I want to stress out for the junglers out there is you have to get a feeling for your backing. Don't think of it as backing, think of it as strategic backing. Because, so for this, for example, I could just go straight to my red buff for two camp, but just buying the items, uh, I could just arrive at my red camp at about the same time, a little bit late. Um, I'm, I would only be a little bit later if I were just to walk over. Now, I, I paused there because my niece had uh, come into my room and she wanted to sit on my lap and watch and, and commentate. <clears throat> she was coaching me. <laughs> So now we are just going to continue with the red clear. We want to see if we can contest the river here. It's seven minutes and we don't want to give it to the Gideon for free. So this, what I do here is pretty risky. It's a pretty risky maneuver because if the enemy of Sarath is right there, we're, we're, we're pretty much dead, but luckily it pays off. Anytime you, with, with Sarath, you don't, you want to always try to save your E right you don't want to engage with e sometimes you have to because they're just running away and you're, you're you can't break that distance but ideally you don't want to engage with e because <clears throat> e is like your one ability that really allows you to create distance it's super important so you don't want to just haphazardly use it <clears throat> Now we're gonna steal the Serath's um, three camp again because we just want to put her behind. If like it may not seem like much, but when you siphon a camp here and there, it adds up. And now the Serath came, and we don't want to force anything, so we're immediately backing. There's this is not a situation. We got the three camp. You're not gonna you know put, be uh, Michael Jordan and and you know go 1v3 and get it no that's not what happens it, it, that's that, that that doesn't happen in the jungle against competent opponents so we take the three camp that's a huge w for us we gotta quit while we're ahead go back and farm now the serath looped around what i should do here is just immediately drop the camp i'm greedy though i wanted the level six so there's an argument for that but they killed the kira and now what's gonna happen? I'm already too late. So I'm gonna try to um, re recoup the situation. And I opt to use my um, E there because I, 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 I was hoping to get the orb for Serath's passive. For those of you who may not know, Serath, Serath's passive drops an orb where you can it it, 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 it it cools down your abilities by two-thirds so it's very powerful very very powerful and again here we are oh we want to just siphon so we wanted to kill the blue buff from Serath, but we don't want to risk dying gideon shows up and we're out we're no we're no longer going to we're, we're 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 aborting and he's following us and he catches us he blinks for us here and then we have to blink through there and that and luckily we had blink so 
all in all, that's incredible, right? He 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 saw how greedy we were, because we were. We wanted to just like last hit the um, blue camp, and he blinked for us, which is it's smart, but it yielded nothing for him. So that's good for us. We opt to go Eviscerator this match because Eviscerator is just phenomenal. It's, it, it's, it, I didn't understand how good Eviscerator is in jungle until I played it on Serath. And one of the reasons is, is because it, you, it has, it's on a 30 second cooldown. So you can use it in the jungle often. Here, Gideon has the indicator behind us. He knows we're there. So he, he just continued to run. Which is understandable. I hate that indicator. It shouldn't be so. Um, it shouldn't be so free. Like if somebody sneaks up behind you, they should be rewarded for the extra effort to sneak up behind you. But we see Gadget is on the Red River. I mean, I mean, is on the River Camp, which is why we're not contesting it. We're just going to continue with our clear. Here we pop a Viscerator just to burn down the Red Buff. It's really good my favorite crest on Serath. However, if they have a lot of CC, you need to get Liberator. You can't, you need to have a cleanse, basically. If they have a lot of CC and, and, you, and you don't have cleanse, you're dead. You're dead, Serath. So here's a big moment. I pop everything, Eviscerator, my ult, and I'm just wailing on them and poof, they disappear. Uh, uh, one big thing about that fight was I, I had a huge power spike before that fight went down. Eviscerator and Stormbreaker. And that is what helped me win that fight. <clears throat> and now we want to just crash. Since mid died, we just want to crash the wave against the mid tower. Uh, so the tower takes as much damage and we deny the enemy mid laner uh, uh, as much XP. Because it, that that wave should be dead by the time the next wave comes, or very close to death. So we are low on HP. We don't have sustain, so we're taking a strategic back and going back to um, clearing our blue side. Now, I, uh, guys, a lot of you who have not played against Seraph a lot, you you one thing that you have to do is always keep your cool. Don't panic when she goes on top of you. You just have to do a, 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 like a, a, a process of elimination of the abilities that she used. But you keep in mind, the if she gets a favorable position on you, she's in the driver's seat for the most part. She's in the driver's seat and you have to react properly to the Seraph. So, for example, Say if she word. is able to uh, walk up on you, without using her Q and E, that's the worst case scenario. That's the worst case scenario because now she can stick to you with both her Q and E and also her right mouse button. So uh, you, you, have, you have to see if she engages on you with E, then you know basically all she has is her Q and right click at that moment and you just don't want to um, you, you have to be strategic with your blink. Be, like, maybe wait until she uses her Q, or make sure she's not using her Q before you blink. You have to do that. You have to. Because too many people, they just are too predictable with their blink. And then it's the worst feeling in the world when the Sarah blinks, <clears throat> I mean, cues you and blinks on top of you and then and gets you. So. Here we secure uh, a, a primal pain tooth. So yeah, make make note of that. Um, now you might not even get away, even if you play it well and strategically. Keep that in mind. So, some people are, are running builds, move speed builds, and and builds with perforator. And you, this ca character Seraph has makes really good use of move speed. So you may not even get away, truthfully. But you want to give yourself the best chance. 
So, it, like, I mean, like, if she has a blink up and you have a blink up, and then you use a blink and then she uses a blink, you're not, you're, you're, you're like, you likely never were able to get away. But think of it this way: try to think of, take the positives out of it. If you blink and then this enemy Seraph blinks after you, you burned her blink. So there is some positive there because chances are, if they, if, if um, she didn't burn her blink on you, she was gonna burn it on one of your teammates. It sucks that it had to be you, <laughs> but that, that that that's Dota. No, I was gonna say that's Dota. That's Mobus. That's Mobus. So my my niece came again, which is why I I paused there. So we see a, a fight going on, and it, it, it it's a lost cause, um, maybe. Oh no, they dive the tower and they take a ton of damage. Mori does a really really good job damaging them and we don't want her death to be in vain so here the i don't want to go in on the crunch because the crunch hurts like a, 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 a mofo he's a he, he yeah he ouch so i want to create some distance because crunch is scary and mori comes like a champion and just helps helps to uh helps me out and then this guy blinks but like i said if seraph has a blink you're toast you're toast and that's all that it takes really he blinked he did good and i'm seraph so it's not good enough now again we're low we have to try to like assume the enemy jungler saw us at low HP. They can very well be on their way to hunting us. We just want to back and not risk anything. You, any competent jungler is going to be constantly looking at the map, m taking account of HPs. And if they see you at low HP going back into the jungle, they may just come pay you a visit because it's one of the most opportunistic times to visit the jungle, right? Okay, well, worst case scenario, if, if they're there and the enemy collapses on me, at least the jungle is low, so I could maybe trade one for one. So it's it, it almost evens out, unless you have a bounty. But you always want to be taking um, a, a mental note of everyone's HP bars as a jungler. And now that we have Stormbreaker and Sky Splitter, our jungle clear is lightning quick. This is the fact that the Stormbreaker is the single most item to accelerate your jungle clear. And the second item that allows you to accelerate your jungle clear the quickest is Sky Splitter. So that's why I run those two, because you basically sneeze on the jungle minions and they die. It's amazing. And then you couple that with Eviscerator, even quicker. Um, you, you With fa uh, minor objectives like Fangtooth and Mini or Prime, you delete them. You can solo them easily. Just make sure you queue Mini Prime's uh, explosion, or even better, just step step out of it. Save your queue for, for if you get collapsed on. So here we want the tower gold here. That's why we are pushing it locally. However, I make a fatal error here. So uh, the Seraph engaged on me. And basically in, in a mirror, you really want to be the one to use your abilities first because consider it from this perspective. The Seraph used her Q on me that means if I use my Q on her immediately after, her Q is going to come off cooldown first. So um, I overstayed my welcome. What I should have done there was retreat quicker. The tower gold is all fine and dandy, but it was not worth giving up a eight kill streak bounty. Not not a good look, especially to the Revenant. So, very big error on our part there, unfortunately. But we're gonna try to just keep cool, maintain our composure, and just focus on the task at hand. You know, um, 
it, it's easier said than done. I, I often lose my cool too. But the, the more you can remain calm and focused, the, the better you'll play. The, 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 the less uh, emotion will cloud your judgment and your interpretation of the events in real time. You want to be cool as a cucumber. So we were hoping that the crunch would push up here a little bit, but no dice. We we were a little bit too um, a little bit too impatient there, and since Sarath doesn't really push waves hard, we we're just farming a little bit before. Uh, we, 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 yeah, we just wanted to get a little, a little bit of money and XP out of our time there. And unfortunately, we were out of position because we should have been there for that Fang Tooth. That was, that, that's a misplay on us as junglers. We should have been contesting the objective. We should be the first one always there contesting the, the objective every time. Anytime the, the enemy team wants to roll up and, and take it. So, big misplay by me. Very big misplay. Unfortunate, but you can't always play perfect. So there's the Gideon. He, he, oh, I saw the Seraph coming in on me, and she. Oh man. Yeah, I saw her at the last second, which is why I didn't continue to to go in on the Gideon. I managed to do enough damage, but truthfully, the Seraph would have killed me if the gadget wasn't there to give me support. Uh, the Sarath and Gideon would have just scored a kill on me and, and that would have been the end of it. But thankfully Gadget was there to help me out to root the Sarath and I I didn't I there was zero percent chance of me escaping out of that situation out, out from a, a Gideon and the Sarath. So um, I was just trying to do as much damage before I went down. And a lot of players sometimes you see those players that will be like getting ganked and then they just take their hands off the mouse and keyboard or controller and then they don't move that isn't terrible because you should always be making things the most difficult as possible for your enemies and if you take them like say you're 100 percent dead but you take them uh seven seconds out of where they want to go afterwards right then it's gonna take them that seven seconds to walk back on top of where the you know where you would have died if you just took your controller off the keyboard. So here we have a counter gank, and we were closer to Muriel, so we wanted to get some damage on the Muriel. There's no chance we're letting that Seraph get away. We see the rev here, and we don't really have we we can continue to run. And we get the rev down to one hit, but unfortunately the Kira in lane was um, just last hitting the wave. Which stinks, because if the Kira just goes there, right? I'm pretty sure Gideon teleported. She just get, hits one shot on the rev, gets the kill on the rev, who has a streak right now and a nice bounty. And the Gideon, she, it, it's a 1v1 against the Gideon who already used all his abilities on me. So the fight was completely in, in um, our Kira's favor. Unfortunately, the Kira, probably a newer player, was uh, unable to recognize that. So we go down, unfortunately, for no no reason. Like, no, no we, we get no benefit out of it, really. We just got... We just got scored no actually i mean we did get the serath so it, it is technically like a one for one i don't know if they got anybody else on our team mid though so here top of this orator delete red buff one of the reasons why i like this build is because serath is an all-in character and if you noticed for our third item we went draconum because it, it offers a little bit of protection. It offers 60 damage oh, at 10 stacks, which is fairly easy to get. And not only that, it um, offers a little bit of sustain in the jungle. You get you get that extra bonus regen. Now, 
one also pretty awesome thing is the fact that uh, Dracodum is the only item in uh, the only item in the game that gives you like a quick heal, a quick massive heal uh, off of your takedowns. So Serath, being an all-in character, benefits this the most from any other character in the game because you you have to c commit a hundred percent with Serath. She is a like live life on the edge character. So we see the Mori trying to um, do do a lot of damage, and we, we realize that a little bit too late. And unfortunately, there, what I should have done, I shouldn't have. When I eat, I shouldn't have tried to go back in on the Reb. I should have tried to disengage. It would have helped. And then my team, I'm so proud of my team. And this Mori kicked butt. Like, this Mori really kicked butt. Just surviving, 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 and allowing the Kira to to, to, to get that phenomenal play by, by my team there. But, yeah. And then in, we're, we're doing, for our fourth item here, we're doing a tech item, meaning, like, we are taking a look at the enemy team and counter picking them basically the item that we choose and we're going to opt for demon edge which is a count a hard counter to muriel it basically anytime we attack a target with shields i think it immediately pops the shield for and, and it does a percentage of damage based on the shield or based on off of our physical power something like that and it also gives us a move speed boost so this is it, it, it's an option that is great against Muriels. If you have a Muriel and Richter on the enemy team, oh, even more. Muriel, Richter, Steel? Oh yeah, you definitely want Demon Edge. Demon Edge is gonna pay dividends. But generally, if it's just a Richter and Steel, you don't really want it. There's better options. It'll help against the Richter and Steel for sure, but um, it, 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 every situation is different. So here, now we're just trying to siphon some enemy camps because Every little camp you get away. Now, so, some of you may see this and think, oh, he, he's being like extremely risky going in there. He can just get collapsed on and die. No, not really. Uh, as Seraph, you, now you have to be careful when you're doing this because I failed many times, especially recently. By the two camp, you can get out of there and you could use your ascend into the river. So you could go into the river. And the same with the the five camp. You, you you with the five camp you can um, climb over like the little lowered wall. And because the reason why I'm so aggressive in taking camps is because it's a crunch. Crunch can't go over the wall unless he burns a blink. And if he burns a blink, then he burns a blink. What can you do about that? It's it, it you. You know, you just have to fight at that point. But if he really wants to burn a blink for just the chance of possibly getting you, then he then that's his choice. You know, that's the thing. You, 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 you. In, in this game, you, you, you can measure and take into account only so much. Once blinks get into it, you can't, you can't factor blinking for every single scenario. So, in that situation, you saw me hit the ward before ganking. Now, the reason why I did that is because. They still have the tier one tower up. So if I commit, I, I there, there is a possibility that I can die under tower because they just run to their tower and they have that support. If the tier, if their tier one tower was not up there, I'm going, I, I'm ignoring the ward and I'm just diving because I'm like ta towers and dives pretty well. And also we had um, another reason why I didn't risk it for the biscuit was because we had a pretty big by back by when we backed to base with demon edge which is going to be amazing so now that i have gray buff I'm, I'm checking out what's available here and oh yeah we catch the rev unawares and i i actually cue his ultimate there 
truthfully, I don't think the ultimate is really one thing that you want to queue because we're fighting under tower. <laughs> but it worked out anyway. I, 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 I'm very, I'm a very big threat in this game, and I, I deal a ton of damage. So. I don't know how many camps the enemy jungler siphoned from me, but I've already siphoned so many, so, 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 so many from him. And it shows on the scoreboard. That's one thing that is pretty devastating. If you're playing jungle and, and the opposing jungler keeps siphoning camps from you, it's it adds up. It, 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 it's indicative that, you, that your, your team is behind because it shouldn't happen. So nice Mori go Mori just being Mori. And now I'm going in on the Muriel. Like anytime you catch the Muriel, you want to punish. And then I, I, I see that they're kind of um, falling apart here. And I seize the opportunity in that situation. We already took down two. We have five up. I go for the blink there to get to try to get the third, which we confirm. And now that's going to result in Ord Prime and quite possibly the game. But in this game, like I'm, I'm very lucky to have very good teammates because the teammates facilitate success. Oh, look at that. And they surrender. GG. So my recording got cut off for my outro, but I'll just summarize. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and the commentary. I will create guides for jungle players soon and maybe other roles if you guys are interested. And I'll go into the finer details of what, when to level two gank, which is most of the time you don't want to, and also some other finer jungle details like with crunch, why when you're level five, you should try to abstain from ganking and just try to get to level six. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? The, the character changes once he's level six and the gank potential of level five is pathetic compared to level six, but many many things like that i'm gonna share with you guys we're gonna share our knowledge help each other out improve each other and help to elevate each other's game to be the best pred players that we can be if you if you enjoyed the video please consider dropping a like or writing a comment it helps the youtube algorithm i also find joy for you when you guys do that but it's not necessary i just like making content for you guys so Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, fight on, friends.